I'm very excited to have our next guest come to the stage. Michelle brought her son Hayden here in July of 2010. It is hard for me to believe that it has been five years since Michelle first came to premiere with Hayden. And Hayden's success has just become something phenomenal. And we're really proud, and she is a dear friend of mine, and a dear friend to all of the parents and children who have attended premiere and are here today. Everyone, let's please welcome to the stage, Michelle Byerly. We need, a, we need our microphone. Where's her microphone? I'm going to let you have the microphone. Uh, every year I come back, I'm like, Michael, we got to sit down. We got to chat. I have so much to tell the families. <laughs> so go ahead and tell everybody about July of 2010, your experience, how it started. Um, okay, so we came here in um, July of 2010. We are originally from Littleton, Colorado. Um, I didn't come here because I thought Hayden was going to be an actor. I came here because my son was a little nerdy and shy and quiet, and I wanted him to gain confidence. I wanted him to be able to stand in front of a class and give a book report without being nervous. And um, so uh, we came here in July 2010, and not only did Hayden leave here with wings, but he won first place in his age group. Um, he had 18 different industry professionals interested in him. And um, he signed with one, we were here in July 2010, he signed with one in October of 2010 in Los Angeles, because that's closest to us in Colorado. And um, he booked his first TV audition as a guest star on Zeke and Luther. Which is crazy. Crazy. We just dropped into the industry. Barry, can we turn Michelle's mic up too? Her <laughs> mic's a little low. Uh, now, the, the first gig on, on Zeke and Luther. Let's talk about Zeke and Luther. Okay. This is, so Hayden goes to July of 2010. He gets 18 callbacks. 18. He wins first place right. in his age division. Yep. When he comes onto this stage, he thanks his mother, but he also thanks Home Depot. Office Depot. Office, Office Depot. Depot. For, for helping me with his headshots. I was a wedding yes. planner. I was working full time. Okay, so, so you're a wedding planner, you're working full time, and he wants to thank Office Depot Jan. to help Jan. his headshots. Okay. Jan. So Hayden was just that kind of kid, and when he came onto the stage, he came on like a little guy, but a little old man guy. Yeah. Like he just has this great mature personality, great understanding of life. He gets these 18 callbacks. Talk about the follow-up of the 18 callbacks and then getting Zeke and Luther. Okay, so we went home, from, we went back to Colorado. Um, I always tell everybody, don't quit your job. Don't go home and tell everybody that your kid's gonna be an epic actor um, because you just go back and life is, is normal. Um, uh, he, we decided to take um, Hayden to Los Angeles in October for his fall break. And I really thought, okay, well, we'll meet with a few of these. I think we met with five different agencies. We'll see what happens. We'll check it out. I still was not convinced that Hayden was an actor. I, I was just convinced that he was this cute little kid and he was having a great time and we were just going to go and go to Disneyland. And um, we went, I, I always suggest that you go to their offices. Like you come here, um, you meet all these great people, uh, keep it simple, callback day, um, because you're gonna go to their office and you're gonna meet with them there. And um, it's, yeah, it's And then, it's, and then, he, books, then he books Zeke and Luther, <laughs> but Zeke and Luther was his, his first, first, TV his audition. first audition. His so first audition. So you're still not believing this. No. He kind of gets the first Absolutely. Agent, he books the first job. He works the next week. He goes to work the next week. Like we, no acting classes, no training. So what was that like with him uh, booking his first gig? He, it was unbelievable. He, he, it was, it was crazy. Um, 
all this lingo, right? Like you come here and you learn how to slate your name and you learn, you learn all these great techniques and walking and looking at the camera and, and then you go to LA and you're like on, on a set, on a film and it's back to one and action and all these different terms. Hayden just, he just took off. He just, he just. So literally... he did Zeke and Luther and then it still wasn't reality. <laughs> no, I drove home. I'm like, yeah, good job. High five. Good job. That was great. That was, that was awesome. great. We went to premiere, <laughs> you booked a Disney show and now we're going home. Home. Everyone's like, are you crazy? You're not going to go home. You need to give this kid a chance. Are you crazy? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. But every time we came back, he booked another job. Every single time. I put him on camera. You got to come to L.A. We want to see but, him. Well, that's Pick a good a point. You put him up. So you, when he was following up on these auditions that he had, you weren't necessarily living no, in was, Los Angeles. No. You were actually doing gigs and going on tape from home. Yeah, so we, it was normal. Like I said, we, I always say go home and, and treat it like any other hobby. So Hayden would go to school, I would go to work. Um, I have another son who's a year younger than Hayden. We would drop him at basketball. Hayden and I would go home, we'd put audition on tape. Um, we'd submit it, we'd email it, and then we'd get a call and they'd say, you need to come to Los Angeles. And I would scurry around and my family would help and they'd say, are you crazy? You're going out to LA? <laughs> are you nuts? So you're going out to LA because you taped it at home and they knew the interest was there. Correct. So it wasn't like you're going out blindly saying, I'm just going to get on a plane and I'm going to walk off the plane and Steven Spielberg's going to pick me up. <laughs> no. No. And no, take me to his house. No, but I think there was a like like I hear that all the time. I'm like, if I heard that, I probably would have done that, right? I mean, these are our kids. They're like fantastic. So I probably would have would have gotten on the plane and, and headed out a couple times. So we go from him booking multiple gigs. Did he? What what happened after Disney XD? He booked commercials, right? Commercials, yeah, yeah. I think he's done probably over fifteen national commercials, and and that's not including Oscar Mayer. The Oscar Mayer campaign, there's probably like what ten? I don't ten national commercials. He um, is the first kid to do. Um, he was in Call of Duty Black Ops Two, which is motion capture. So he's the first kiddo for Treyarch Productions to work with in motion capture. He's the voice of Prince Gustav on Sophia the First. He's done a few voices for some video games, um, Final Fantasy. He just did Jurassic World. Like he he's been a little booking machine. But he did he did Eleven Eleven Eleven. Mm -hmm. So that was the second thing. So he did. Uh, Zeke and Luther, some commercials, then 11, 11, 11, which is a scary movie, and it's just, it, it's a scary, <laughs> just watch the trailer. Um, low budget, it was low budget, and then we did Parenthood, he's a reoccurring role in Parenthood as Micah, and now we're on The Fosters. So, yeah. Boom! I mean, being on The Fosters, the, the ABC family took on a project that's executive produced by Jennifer Lopez, and took this project on uh, two, three years ago. Two years, I two, years two years ago? ago yeah. You're shooting the third season, right? We're getting ready to go into 3B. We just wrapped 3A. 3A. So we're on okay. break, and then we'll go back in September. So with that said, knowing that you guys are going to be shooting the third season of this show, you, it's not a fly-by-night situation. It's not like you've shot a pilot, are we going to get picked up? It's not like... We've done a first season. Should we be living in L.A.? You're living in L.A. because you're in a third season now. That's a big deal. Yeah, we moved there last year. So we went back and forth for a year or a few years. But we mm -hmm. just moved to L.A. last year. We, we, we took, I have another son, so we headed home. And you did that because you knew that he was finally Absolutely. in a third season. It was like a real situation. Absolutely. Nobody asked me to move. I mean, lots of people still work in the industry and don't live in Los Angeles. Um, so nobody ever asked me to move, but I grew up in Breckenridge, Colorado, in the mountains, and I was dying to get to the beach, so I, <laughs> I took advantage, and there we are. So you have made some classic <laughs> correct choices and some classic, cl classic mistakes. I'm like the queen of mistakes. <laughs> and, and that's perfect, and that's why we're talking today with these parents, because I, I think that it's invaluable as a parent to understand what we as parents have done correctly and what we haven't done so well. And I think that it's important to share that information. What information do you think is super important for all these parents to understand? 
Um, I have definitely ruined a few auditions of Hayden's for sure because because we were so green and yet we were green meaning not having experience, yeah. not feeling like you have to go throw up. You, yeah, <laughs> but but because Hayden was working, yet there's such this awkward balance of being a parent and being a momager, you know, and and so you're always like you want to help your kid and you want to make sure they're great, but at the same time, you it's a business like. This is definitely a business, and I wanted Hayden to um, be mature and responsible, but I also wanted to make sure that he was still a kid. And so there's this awkward balance. We drive, you know, 15 hours from Colorado. We drive to LA. We get to an audition. I have my ear against the door because I'm trying to listen to make sure that he's doing everything correct because I just drove 15 hours for this child. <laughs> And I'm like... <laughs> I drove 15 hours. You better get this one right. You better get this right, man. Like, this is, you know... And so um, this kid tapped me on the shoulder, and I turn around, like, what is my kid, you know? And, and it's closed doors. Like, everything you do, you know? Like, okay, well, we're going to take your kid, and we're going to go back behind this door. And we're gonna, you're like, what? really? Where, where are you going? What are you doing? So I'm listening. Tap on the shoulder. I turn around. The guy's like, oh, it was like really? Really, lady? And I'm like, we just drove. We... Just now, we've been, what, four, what is this, four years for us? Just now got back into that casting office. Just now. All because of my, my mom, my mom, Your mom, mom moment. My, my, my mom moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you can ruin it for your kids. Absolutely. You definitely can ruin it for your kids. Just so sit back when, when you were here trust. five years ago and you're watching yourself and you're watching the other moms, what did you see them do really well here? and not so well here? Well, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention, to be honest, when I was here. <laughs> I didn't know Hayden was going to be acting, so I sat here and I just enjoyed. I really, honestly enjoyed it. And um, callbacks are, are like, I, I love talking about callbacks. Um, I, uh, I feel like you should take a moment and enjoy the week, and at the end, when you get your callbacks, you should keep it simple. I feel like you should... I had like a list of things because I didn't pay attention all week, right? So I went in. I was like, what do you see in my kid? Where, who do you represent? How many, where are we going? What are we doing? And it was really overwhelming. I went home and I Googled everybody and I, I wouldn't do that. I just keep it very simple. You have callbacks. You ask three questions. Are you an agent? Are you a manager? What, who, who are you? What do you do? Um, where are you located? Because you're going to want to go visit them in their office and you get their contact information and you stay in touch. It's simple. You don't, don't make it complicated. Well, 18 callbacks. You have 18 callbacks. <laughs> yeah. So how, how do you look Jeez. at 18 callbacks and say, who am I going with? You know, 18 is a lot. It is a lot. I narrowed it down. I just really, I just narrowed it down. I, I, Did you narrow it agents. down by we saw agents. how they met? How you met with them here, or you talked to all of them on the no, phone? No, I talked or? to all, I emailed all of them. I emailed all of them. I didn't always get a response back from all of them. In fact, it's funny, some of them respond to me now, and it's been, what, years later? Um, and my favorite story, Michelle, by the way. Michelle, I have an email from you from five years ago, and your son <laughs> is now a working actor. I would like to speak with you. I know, because we don't have a manager. <laughs> I have an opportunity to make 10% of what your son makes, and I would like to speak with you now. I know Welcome it's been five years. LA. I know it's been five years, but please do not take this personally. Uh, well, kids are not going to get callbacks too. And those, they, they, I have a favorite story. One of my girlfriends, who I met here when Hayden was at Premiere, has a younger daughter, and she they hung with us the whole time. Here, Hayden wins. He gets 18 callbacks, and her daughter got nothing. And so she was incredibly bummed. They went home. They live in Texas. And like months later, she called and she said, hey, can we come, you know, stay with you? You're going to be in L.A. It was like pilot season. Um, I said, sure, come out. What's going on? And she said, this company who we met at Premier um, reached out to us. At the time, they had a, a girl who looked just like my daughter, and they don't anymore. And so we're going to come out. We're going to meet with them. We're going to see. She came out. She booked a commercial. She hated it. They went home. They packed up. They haven't been back. But she's my favorite story because she, lots of kids here know, you know, that doesn't mean you go home and, and tuck your tail and feel bad. You so just because you don't get a, an immediate a response back. doesn't mean that the response won't happen later. No. And she booked a commercial and, and she, then the, her daughter decided, I'm done. Yeah, okay. she calls that college money. <laughs> there you go. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Hayden is now a really big star for ABC Family. 
And years ago, when we talked, and I mentioned this story, I don't know if it was today or, or yesterday, it must have been today, I said something about you bringing up Instagram to me. Yeah. And how, you know, Instagram, and Michelle's like, oh, Instagram, it's so cool, and this and that, and she's like doing all these pictures and liking things, and I'm like, that's just <laughs> silly. And, you know, now you look at it and you say, this is a, a really important thing. It's been a, a huge topic of conversation on this stage last night and today about the importance of social media. Talk about your Instagram account, talk about Hayden's Instagram account and the importance of social media and how that kind of ties in because you can do things on yours, Hayden has to do certain things that ABC Family really likes. Yeah. ABC Family, by the way, guys, is owned by Disney. So it's all kind of the same thing. Okay, so I, I view things a little differently. I, I am a premier parent. Yay! Um, so, so I don't necessarily, I think that everybody should manage their kids differently. I, I think how you know your kid the best. You know what is best for your child. No one else, no one knows. Um, and, and so for us, Personally, I don't know if I totally believe that social media is going to get Hayden a job. I think that his acting is going to get him a job. I think that he, training and, and, and for, for all of you, I, I don't know if going home and popping on Instagram is necessarily going to get you a job. I, Hayden doesn't have a website. I don't hand out business cards. I don't have. I don't. I don't do a lot of the. I don't have 500 photo shoots of my kid. Like, I, I just have gone with my gut. And and um, and followed Hayden pretty much. So I personally love Instagram, but I get in a lot of trouble. Instagram can get you in trouble. You, I'm texting and typing, and before I knew it, the words are popping out, and somebody's saying, "Michelle, <laughs> what are you doing?" So you do have to be really careful on social media for sure. And I think that's why my son Hayden is not necessarily on Instagram all the time. But it is important. ABC Family asks that you keep up with um, certain shout outs on Monday nights for the show or you know, um, nonprofit charity, like where you're going. Um, I don't know about branding just yet, um, but I'm sure that at some point that will be asked of us to, mm -hmm. to Oh, I'm start, sure, because you know? the kids who are here, the celebrity guests that are here this week, uh, they told us that they have to go to Disney 101. And Disney 101 is the social media PR kind right. of, this is your protocol, this is how you should handle yourself. Yeah. Does ABC ha Family is different. It, we don't did have Hayden any... have to do that? Mm -mm. No. Uh-uh. What, what uh, direction do you see Hayden's career going right now? Because he's such a, a high-profile, highly recognizable person on ABC Family. Has there been conversation about him doing things uh, maybe in a different series, the future of his career, film? Movies. He's got three offers right now for, a move, for different movies. Uh, I, he is not going to be the Disney kid um, just because I... I, I just think his eyes, he's, like, he's an old soul, right? I mean, he's really 50, but he's 14. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just see him in like, more, he, Leonardo DiCaprio is his, his, um, his, his guy. His guy, yeah. Okay. So he, he, I think he's just going to kind of go in a different, a different direction. But I don't, I don't know. For, for the families that are here wanting to know kind of what is the next step for them, Obviously, it's callbacks, it's agents, it's following up on interests. What have you seen parents do with their callbacks that are done correctly and not done so correctly? Because you get emails all the time. Yeah, you get families that ask you for advice constantly. All the time, yeah. I love that. If you guys need anything at all, please let me know. Um, mistake? I don't, I don't know. I just I feel like... It's so overwhelming that day, and you really just kind of need to step back a little bit and and take it seriously, for sure, for sure. Um, if you don't hear from somebody, contact them again. Um, it gets a little overwhelming down there. Because you've gotten a lot of interest and in a lot of things, so it's kind of <laughs> the opposite. Well, one, one point of view is getting no callbacks, one point of view is getting a lot of callbacks. Yeah. So it's probably overwhelming either way. I think so, yeah, for sure, for sure. 
And then yeah. as far as uh, your expectation for your own child is to allow Hayden to kind of lead the way and, and show the way. Yeah. For, That's your advice to the parents well, here? Let your child's always. interest kind of lead the way? or mm, Not always. Um, Hayden's got, he's a different, we're kind of a different pair. Or mm -hmm. He's the adult in the family. Um, <laughs> um, no, I, I, you know, um, raising a kid in this industry is really tough. It's really, really tough because you want them to do really well um, but you still need to be the parent. That's been a really tough thing for me. So, you know, um, can we talk about money? If you want to. Yeah, let's talk about money. Everyone always asks me about money. Um, I, I, cause, because you're here, right? And, and then you're going to go downstairs, you're going to get your callbacks, and you should push forward, and you should um, go to meet with the person, uh, agent, whoever, manager wants to meet with you. And then... Um, hopefully, cross your finger, your child books a job this year and you can write it off. <laughs> it's a tax write-off this trip. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so let me tell you this. Zeke and Luther uh, was Hayden's first job. It was one week. It was Disney. Hayden was paid $3,000 for the week. Uh, he had a manager at the time was 10%. He had an agent at the time was 10%. He has a Coogan account. It's 15%. Then you pay your taxes. And what do you Coogan account is money that you have to put aside your for trust. your child. Uh, Jackie Coogan, who played Uncle Fester in the Adams Family, he was the, uh, he, he was sort of look, looked a bit like me without the beard, and then had a, a light bulb in his mouth. So uh, they created that because uh, he, started, he started out on the Little Rascals. So uh, he grew up, and his parents basically spent every dime that he made. So they created a law called the Coogan Law, where 15% of a performer's monies have to go into an account just for them, and when they're 18, they can have access to the money. Yes, please keep But going. you don't have to worry about that right now. So, um, so you have this money, right? So you, he, he's, he's 10, Hayden was 10, and he knows he's working full time as an adult, right? He's working, uh, Hayden's 14 now, he can work nine and a half hours, three hours are school time, hour and a half break time. He's there Monday through Friday and he knows how much money he makes. And so um, raising a child in this industry and money is involved, right? And so there's this, you gotta keep them grounded, you have to keep them humble but at the same time, you have to reward them, right? Mm -hmm. These kids are, you, you, your kids now are, are doing a lot of hard work this week, like running around and changing and focusing and memorizing your lines. And, and um, it, it's a lot of work on kids. This industry is a lot of work on kids. And you're working with adults and you're working amongst other kids full time, full time. It's, tough, it's a tough industry. Well, yeah, it is. But, but it's it, fun. But it's fun. It and is it, fun. And at the same time, it's fantastic. you're talking about the challenge of money. You're talking about the challenge of raising a child who's earning monies while they're working and trying to keep them grounded as a child. So what would be the, the best advice that you could well, give? Because you know you're your in the kid, middle of that. You know your kid better than anybody else. I know Hayden better than any, anybody else does. So, you know, I, I tell him he sucks every day. <laughs> <laughs> Because everyone else tells him how great he is? Yeah. yeah. They, like, okay. pamper him, you know? They yeah. run around. They feed him. They drive him. They, you know? What they... was the story that you told me about them? Can I get you anything? Can I get you anything? Everybody's always asking. Yeah. I'm like, no. He can get it himself. There no. you go. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> no. Yes. People are always like, oh, he's famous. I'm like, he's not famous. <laughs> he's a kid. He's Hayden Byerly. Thank an Office Depot. <laughs> um, totally, totally. Now, your, your, your other son, obviously, is a young guy who is watching his brother go through these different things. Landon is, is so unbelievably understanding and loving. And yeah. Tell me about yeah. the relationship cause, with the sibling, because yeah. parents have to deal with that challenge as well. Yeah, that was really hard for me. Um, I was married at the time that I was here in July of 2010, um, and I, I got divorced along along the way. A year a year later, I am. Um... <laughs> Someone's applauding for you. Single. I, I, I don't. 
I don't know if that's a woman uh, supporting you in your decision or if it's a man who's happy that you're single. But we'll find out later. <laughs> um, but I was leaving... Hashtag Michelle uh, hash, Hashtag single. Single. Um, but I was leaving Landon. I was leaving my other son with my husband at the time, and we were coming back and forth, and that was really hard for me. Um, he had a family business to run, and he said, you're crazy if you think you're going to go follow that kid's dreams. <laughs> okay. Guess who called me last week? <laughs> 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 um, but Landon, my Landon is, is fantastic. He, he's shy, quiet. He goes with the flow. He, he, um, he couldn't have been a better kid to have Hayden, his siblings, you know? Um, he could care less uh, about his brother. People are like, oh, your brother's famous. He's like, no, he's not. Like, it's so weird. Um, and it's, it's hard for me. This is what's really hard for me is that he's now in public school in Los Angeles. And I'm always like, don't tell anyone that's your brother. Because the demographics of the Fosters is Landon's age. So all these 13-year-old girls want to be Landon's friend because Hayden is on the Fosters. Big challenge for you. Big challenge for me. So I'm always like, you know, can't have friends over. Can't, like, and I try to be, you, know, you put on all these different hats, you know, mm -hmm. you're, like you're this, this kid's mom, this kid's mom, then we have the momager, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's like all these different hats that you're constantly juggling. Well, you're doing it on your own, which is different too. Yeah. Uh, it, now, is Hayden, this is the thing about Hayden. Hayden is such a gifted performer that I, I'm not certain if he's ever even taken an acting class. Has he ever taken an acting class? Nah, he's had a few acting coaches, like mm -hmm. coaching private sessions, one-on-ones um, -on with people, but no, he's never been in a group class before, no. Because he just had sort of just a natural instinct he's a to be in this business. He's a fantastic memory. Mm -hmm. He's a fantastic memory. And, he, and he, he makes me a little nervous. By the way, I don't know how many of you watch The Fosters, but um, you, yeah... Um, you do not have to take on every single role. I know that parents um, sometimes are, are wondering um, if I was forced to have Hayden play a gay character on TV. Um, but no, you, and, and parents should know that. If you, you know, there's certain auditions that come forward. If you don't like the language or you don't like the content, you do not have to take the audition. You do not have to take the role. You should audition. Yeah, you should I audition don't think and get in front of everybody. But I think that a lot of people are um, first getting into the industry and they're a little cautious about mm. what you should and shouldn't be doing. I think if anybody is interested in your child, you should be super excited at this point, regardless of, of who wants to, who that is. So with the choices that he's made in his career and the opportunities that he's been given, you said that there's three different film sort of possibilities for him right now. Yeah. What is making you lean toward one or the other? Is it the career choice? Is it what he wants to do? Is it what you'd like to see as a parent for the morality and the ethical choices you want your son to be a part of certain things because it fits into your family fiber? I think that um, Hayden is the exception to the rule. And I think that um, uh, he has done, he's only done lead characters, principal roles. Um, so for me to get a movie where he's not a principal role, I don't feel like he needs the screen time anymore. Um, you know, looking back on things, just so you guys know, I, I should have gone to LA and had audition, had Hayden audition for more roles. He would have probably, not to say that he didn't book quickly, but he probably would have booked faster. If I was you weren't very there. selective. I was very, if I was. <laughs> if you weren't in the casting. <laughs> Hello. Um, I was very selective. I, you know, like I was like, oh no, that's not good enough. Or, oh, I'm not really sure about that. Or, oh, we're going to wait for a dolphin tail. And, uh, you know, like I wasted a lot of money driving to LA, sitting in a hotel room for two weeks, waiting to see if Hayden booked dolphin tail. Like, wh why? I should have been taking smaller auditions and roles and collecting, like building the resume. I was So the waiting. point is, t it field opportunities and don't expect something to happen a certain way. Yeah. It's going to happen the way God intends it to happen, 
So just allow yourself to explore. Yeah. 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 Some of the, you know, like Hayden is now a foster child, right? And so we, we get every foster child movie. <laughs> like, oh, another foster child. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Go. <laughs> you know? Well, we got to let these kids get into their sessions. Is there something that you okay, wanted to close with? Okay, I have with? notes. Hold on. I have to make sure that we went over all my notes. She has her notes. Yeah, I got to make sure. We talked about money. We talked about callbacks, social media, training. You kids need to be good listeners and learn how to take direction. That's going to get you far in this industry. Uh, parents can ruin it for your kids. Treat this like a hobby. I truly believe that. Once you get home... It, it, the business is normal. Don't pack up and move and tell your friends you're going to be a movie star and quit your job. And it, this is like, this is a hobby. You're going to go home and you're going to take it seriously for and then sure. And your child's going to book a Disney XD I hope so. series and then you're going to move to LA. That's right. And come visit me in Premiere. Right. Yeah. Because Premier Family, we, we stick together for we do. sure. For it, sure. Pre we come Premier, from a different breed. Premier Family is kind of hardcore. And we, I'll tell you why. And I think it's really important to touch on this because Michelle has a friend. We had a production meeting in Los Angeles, and we talked about this reality series that Michelle is talking about developing. And we, we had a conversation, and her friend, whose son is also on the Fosters, had this idea of how you should get in the industry and the common sort of thoughts that people have about what's the right way to get into business versus sort of the premier way of getting into the business. Do you want to We're share any thoughts cheaters. on that? <laughs> We're, yeah. known, we're known as paying our way into the industry. We're known as the cheaters, um, I, which, I, I, yeah, I, I just, I think that's shenanigans. But we, you know, I, I think it's because kids try for a really long time. There's different avenues that everybody takes. And um, I think that when you come to, into this industry, I was going to say into L.A., but when you come into this industry, coming from Premiere, you, you have kind of dropped into this industry. You've gotten all the training, all the coaching, all the classes. You've met with, you know, celebrities. You've met with agents, managers. You, you've kind of did this, like, drop into the industry. Do you that think would, that it's a sense of jealousy? Well, sure, because, like, they've been knocking on doors forever just to try to get an agent to pay attention to them. So, basically, the people that are coming from that point of view don't have access to the things that the premier families have access yeah, to. Yeah, no, 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 for sure. That I mean, makes they, sense. Yeah, they, you know, and, and, and with that said, because the premier family is so tight, I have seen Michelle's support on her Instagram. I have seen families. There's a, now a uh, page that has been created by premier families on Facebook. It's a group that was created on Facebook of all premier families who are going to the December program later this year, who are here at this program, who've gone through the program and are uh, now having kids go on auditions and working in the industry. So now Premier families are really starting to get together. I love that. Yeah. We should. We should stick together for sure. I've had families, I don't do this anymore, just so you know, because we have a very small apartment in, in Los Angeles. But And I've told Byerly to cut it out. <laughs> I used to have families come stay with us because it was I was it was I get it like I so get it it's such a I'm from a small town in Colorado and to come to LA was like it's really scary for me so I so understand being new to this industry and and these are your kids like I said this is a business but these are your kids and and um, I didn't even know how to parallel park before getting to Los Angeles. <laughs> well, in L.A., you're going to have to. You need a driver or you need to learn how to parallel park. It's yeah, one or the other. no, like, yeah, so much. There's so I've learned so, so much. So how can these parents... Michelle's going to be here all day. All day. And she, you guys me. can absolutely feel free to stop her at any point in time, ask her any question you want, anything that comes up, literally. Michelle is genuinely an open book. <laughs> As far as after premiere or how they would contact you or follow up with you, is there, if, if someone doesn't get a chance to see you today for, for whatever reason, how could they follow up with you? You could, um, you could well, of course you're going to follow me on Instagram because I'm, I'm like Insta famous for sure. And that's at Michelle Byerly. Insta hot, what's my hashtag? I have my own hashtag. Insta mama hot mess. That's my hashtag. <laughs> um, okay. And then, and then if you want to email me, you can email me. It's department.hayden at yahoo.com. 
So you are more than welcome to email me if you guys That's would very like. generous of you. Yeah. Guys, let's thank Michelle for being here today. <laughs> Michelle Byerly, everyone. I have waited five years to sit on this couch. <laughs> yes, she has. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. <laughs> thank you, Michael and Michelle. Good luck, everyone, in your practice sessions. Work hard, stay focused, and have fun. Yeah.